ran the Special Operations Division for about 10 years. My interest was this cartel violence in America because I had never seen anything like this in my life. They want to kill potential witnesses. They certainly want to destroy anybody that's a source of information for law enforcement. I'll never forget the time where they cut someone's hand off, stuck it in the guy's mouth, and then put a note around his neck saying like, you know, anybody that's out there that's thinking about being a rat, this is what's going to happen to you. It's happening all over America. We just don't hear about it. The media's not reporting this stuff. They're trying to protect the politicians who are letting these people in the country. You kill innocent victims to send a message. Am I off with that? No, absolutely not. I mean, the cartels right now are operating like a global terror organization like ISIS or Al Qaeda or Hezbollah. And they are trying to intimidate people, trying to send powerful messages across not only the United States, but the world that they are growing, they are powerful, and they're not going to stop and they're not afraid to kill.
you know, anybody that's out there that's thinking about being a rat, this is what's going to happen to you. You kill innocent victims to send a message. The cartels right now are operating like a global terror organization. There is no sexual assault to say anything to you. You know, to me, the perpetrator felt to get whatever it was he was doing done and get out of there, and that his motivation is not a sexual motivation. We've told the public very clearly from the beginning that we believe it was a targeted attack. Uh, I mean, to be honest, you're going to have to trust us on that at this point because we're not going to release why we think that. tragedy in the Central Valley, a family of six shot and killed, including a 17-year-old mother and her six-month-old baby, and the police think it, it, it was gang-related. Investigators believe this may be some kind of cartel execution, and they're searching for several suspects. We believe we have at least two suspects uh, at this point. Uh, we also believe that this is not a random act of violence. We believe that this was a targeted uh, family. We believe that there are gay associations that involved in this scene, as well as potential narcotics investigations. The local sheriff called it a horrific massacre related to drugs and gangs. Tulare County officials released the names of the six victims. They are all related and range in age from 10 months old to 72 years old and include a 16-year-old mother. The young mother was running for her life with her baby in her arms when they were killed. The killings happened at about 3.30 in the morning in Goshen, just east of Vesalia. Authorities have not given any details about gang activity, possible connections to the family, nor the results of a narcotic search warrant that deputies served at the home last week. I wasn't at the crime scene. It certainly has all indications that this is uh, another horrific act of cartel or a ruthless gang out there. But as you know, the gangs in California work very closely with the Sinaloa cartel. Uh, and there's a lot of turf battles. So it's definitely drug related. There's a very good chance the cartels are behind it. They, they actually are sending in operatives and hitmen into America on a daily basis now because the southern border is wide open and they're taking advantage of the weakness there. None of this was by accident. It was deliberate. Intentional. And horrific. We have intelligence on cartels as well as um, gangs and drug trafficking organizations and, and the like. I'm not identifying or pointing a finger at any one cartel. I'm not. I'm saying that what took place is very much like what we've seen in the past when it comes to an execution by cartel. I agree with the assessment that these cartels are terrorist organizations. We're starting to see the our U.S. citizens, obviously, with a fentanyl problem, uh, the traffickers coming into the United States. We're starting to see that. And, you know, it's been happening for a long time. Or maybe there's someone in the house that was the primary target, but you kill innocent victims to send a message. Am I off with that? No, absolutely not. They are trying to intimidate people. And it's really taking it to a new level when you're executing a 16-year-old mother and a 10-month-old baby. But that's exactly what they're trying to accomplish. They're trying to send powerful messages across not only the United States, but the world, that they are growing, they are powerful, and they're not going to stop, and they're not afraid to kill. Alyssa Perez, as you see and we suspected from the evidence of the scene, she was running with her small 10-month-old baby. She ran into the gate, she ran to the fence, and as you saw, protecting her child, laid it on the other side of the fence. 
she jumped over the fence. As you can see, she's petite. Young lady, young mother, jumped over the fence in an effort to save her life and her baby's life. Alyssa and Nicholas were both found dead on the street. Both shot in the back of the head. Oh, they're coming back in. Who's coming back in? The guys. Please hurry, come on. The suspects we put 24 hours, seven day a week surveillance on. Today, I would like to announce the arrest of 35 year old Angel Uriati of Goshen and 25 year old Noah Beard of Visalia. Rivalry gains between the Nortenos and the Serenos, which we have all heard of many, many times. The two members of the Paras family, the victim's family, were well-known, validated Sereños, Sereño gang members in the town of Goshen, which is predominantly held by the Norteño gang. The two suspects arrested today are validated Nortenos. The suspects and the victims have a long history of gang violence, heavily active in guns, gang violence, gun violence, and narcotics dealings. However, having said that, the motive is not exactly clear at this point. A major development in the Goshen massacre in Tulare County. Late tonight, the Tulare County Sheriff's Office confirming with KC24 that eight more arrests have been made under Operation Nightmare. Six firearms, drugs, cash, and other items were seized during the search. Additional search warrants in other locations of known Nortino gang members turned up more firearms, ammunition, and drugs. Authorities searched nearly 100 homes during their sweep. Meth and cocaine also seized in today's search. And since Operation Nightmare began, 26 suspects have been arrested 106 homes searched and 23 prison cells searched of known gang members throughout multiple prisons statewide, all related to the Goshen murders. This case isn't even nearly over. It runs very deep. We anticipate multiple arrests in the future. Uh, this goes deep into our prison system as well as drug trafficking operations and illegal narcotics as well as different affiliated gangs. And this is the first time we're hearing about the killings and maybe the motive being about drug money here, but this is also possibly a much larger picture when you talk about the drugs and the drug money infiltrating the Central Valley. It's a much bigger picture. We did have this massacre. Uh, we were happy to get the primary two suspects in custody for the slaying of those people, but this goes deeper than that. This goes into our prison system. This goes into different levels of drug trafficking organizations up and down the Central Valley of California. There was a change, right? I mean, the way that I always remember it when we think of the traditional mafia and organized crime, maybe I'm naive, but I always thought families no. were you put those to the side, that you don't target the families. There was this escalation, and it's based on fear. Is that what it is? Instilling? Yeah, well, first of all, you're not off base at all. You're 100% correct. You know, the families were usually off limits in, in the old days, right? Traditional organized crime. These cartels, they're dumping humans in acid pits in Mexico. They have no, you know, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just are so ruthless that they just don't care about human life. It's so hard for me to articulate because I've never seen anything like it in my life. This is every state right now is a border state. Whatever comes out of that border lands in every single state in the United States, and we are certainly not excluded. That fear has only grown for Sheriff Donahue, looking at the rise in drug busts this year alone. Idaho State Police reporting more than 28,000 fentanyl pill seizures across the state. If you don't think they're coming to this area, you're absolutely crazy. Looks nice and calm. I can guarantee you there are cartel members in this area we're going to. This goes to all the way to California. This road right here. Yeah. Drugs coming this way? Absolutely. Could drug be in these vehicles? Every, it could be in every one, probable in half of them. 96% of the law enforcement agencies uh, concur that the fentanyl and the meth that are coming into Idaho are sourced in Mexico. 
How bad is it? It's bad, and it's getting worse. The Mexican drug cartels tend to use women to carry the drugs, collect money, and to send terrifying messages uh, to the community. So how do they send messages through women? They kill them. Uh, they mutilate and kill them to reinforce their status. We're here, we're doing business, and nobody better mess with us uh, because this is what can happen to your women. It's, this is a brutal weapon. It sounds like it was a professional type weapon that couldn't break and weren't, they weren't stab wounds. You know, they were like large punctures. So when we go look at this house in here at 1122 King, is it true that um, people in that house have sold products? Yes. Yeah, 100%. And you've bought from them or other people have or you guys like throw down 100%. together? Yep. Yep, all the above. And then would you, you would never classify as anybody in the house as being like, hey, those are drug dealers? Or would you just say like those people are like a no. party? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, they don't. I mean, and that's what I was saying too. Like they're more your friends than they are your dealers. You know, they just happen to be your friends that have fun stuff that you can buy off them. <laughs> basically. Okay. Would would you think that that house had like all this dr like drugs in it that somebody would be like, hey, we need to hit this house up. This house is loaded. Like we can just like ransack it. Not yeah. not enough to warrant like a stabbing, but enough to take four of them overdosing without question. If that makes sense. I, I what I'm saying is like enough was going in and or out of there that it did not surprise any of us that they could have gotten a bad batch in as quickly as a matter of a few days or a week, if that makes sense. Okay. Is that? Yeah, yeah. So like basically, they had enough okay. on hand that if they did too much, like they could OD. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like we totally saw that as plausible. Like they maybe bought an eight ball or something like that, and that was laced with thin, and that's what got them. Right. Definitely. Totally. Like, a hundred percent. We like. Yep. I see that happening. Right. When someone says to you this is an isolated target attack, how do you? What do you think? Like it. Like yeah. Like somebody did something to deserve it. Uh, this person did something bad, and they are deserving of what the action is. Right. And if there's like reason or justification behind it. It's like how I would think of it. Yeah, yeah. So like you're like they're like it was like a mission. It was like, would you could could you could you say it would be like a hit or Almost like like and that's like well when you start to and that's you know like again why I was saying like just a bunch of shit just doesn't make sense because when you start thinking about it like a target attack sounds more closer to a hit than a random you know, Ted Bundy type thing, I guess. I don't, because like, how else or why else would it be targeted? Is it doesn't, university, like our whole vibe was like, are women, like are women targeted? Are sorority women targeted? Like who is the target? What is the target? What did they do, right? Like we didn't know if it was just all sorority women, if it was like, you know, I had a couple girls that I was really close to that I started walking to and from classes back from parties. I mean, a lot of us started doing a lot of stuff like that. No girl walked anywhere without, you know, having a guy with them. And it, like, because we didn't know, like, is is he just gonna pick somebody and say that's the target because they fit a bill? What is like, what's the bill they fit? Like, we don't. I guess we were all like in shock, you know. I mean, just being so close to it, like that house being our party house, Santa, you know, hosted a lot of parties for us, and you know, I mean, like they were just cool people. They were fun to party with. They knew a lot of people. They did a lot for a lot of people around them, you know. Yeah. Um, they might have, you know, been into drugs or whatever, but didn't deserve what happened to them. Send terrifying messages uh, to the community. So how do they send messages through the women? They kill them, uh, they mutilate and kill them to reinforce their status. We're here, we're doing business, and nobody better mess with us. They're trying to send powerful messages across not only the United States, but the world. That they are growing, they are powerful, and they're not going to stop, and they're not afraid to kill.